Right, welcome back to another episode of Testing the Tips, uh, where I, as an average golfer, test out some of the best tips I've come across from leading golf tuition YouTubers out there. And this one comes from a gentleman whose channel is The Art of Simple Golf. I love the idea of anything simple to do with golf and hopefully improve your swing and mine because in today's video, I'll show you why I went from spraying these kind of short irons into peppering the pin with some very different data metrics, all by changing the way I attempt to compress the ball. And it is a real weird one. It defies logic. They're always the ones that I kind of I move into these quirky ones that have an unexpected performance attribute. And believe me, this is weird, but wonderful at the same time. Right, so what we're gonna to attempt to do is we're gonna to look to thin the ball to compress the ball better with our irons thin the ball, or at least in our mind, that's what we're gonna to attempt to do because it doesn't work out that way. And it's a logic, and it's something that I've struggled with for quite some time. When you look to compress a ball, effectively what we will do is in our mind, at least anyway, we'll hit down on the ball, create a very unusual attack angle that can be very, very steep indeed. And what we do is, yes, we hit the ball on the, uh, on the the with a descending blow. Yes, we create a divot, but, there's consequences because effectively what we then start to do is deal off the club a little bit and potentially start to strike the ball with the, this sort of top half of the iron's grooves, which is not the sweet spot by any means. So this is the kind of impact location that you would put onto the ball. And it has a lot of negative consequences. What the explanation is, is what we're trying to do is effectively get the ball to impact in the center of the club face. So maybe two or three grooves above the bottom groove that you'll see on your irons. And to do that, we need a very, very different impact location. And by trying to thin the ball, at least in our heads, and that's what we're gonna to attempt to do in the swing thoughts, you will actually find that you start to hit the ball a little bit more center of club face. The ball will roll up the club face and you'll still create a, uh, an impact location after the ball, so ball then divot. So same uh, principles of what we're trying to do, we're compressing the ball, but striking the ball in a much better position and not creating that very steep angle of attack, which can often lead, like I said, to some very dire consequences. Now, that's the explanation that I got when I watched The Art of Simple Golf. And as I watched it, I thought, a little bit weird, but I hung on in there and I watched it through to the end. And this is what happened. Right, whilst I get my glove on, I just want you to watch the shots that I started this little practice drill with. And what you'll see is some efforts that are quite weak and out to the right hand side. Anybody who watches these drills on YouTube and thinks that you go to the, uh, the driving range or the golf course itself and they have an immediate impact, they'd be pretty foolish. And I like to demonstrate in here that it's not something that I just pick up and run with and it works straight away. And as you can see, I had some doubts in my mind as to this was a drill that would actually benef be beneficial to me. But then I want you to watch these, there's that many balls on top of one another, it's three or possibly four shots that I hit literally, like I said, on top of one another. Carry distance very good, good spin rates, good launch angle, and more importantly, the low point was very consistent as well, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So, the reason I'm now into a position where I'm relaying this information to you is because I started to see results, and those results are very positive. Not only in the fact that I started to put a ball near a flag on the green, I'm playing an eight time from 140 yards, I started to realize a number of things. One is that for me, like I said, I've had a habit over the years of I'd be very much classed as a picker, and that's somebody who doesn't take a divot, hits very much on sort of bottom grooves and maybe a little bit almost on the upswing at times. And I've worked on my uh, low point in trying to move that to after the ball with my irons, but I've never really found a, an effective drill that's worked 100%. And when I'm out on the golf course, like I said, my thought process is that to compress an iron, I'm really looking to close down on the back of it, hands in front of the ball. You can almost feel like there's a, a de-loft sensation and I've done exactly what was suggested in this first explanation. I'm probably hitting the ball more like from middle to top half of the club face and it's not had the best um, best results and therefore gone back to kind of my picking routine but this is different. I'd say it's more about a mental approach because certainly what you 
don't want to do is thin a golf ball. No one would ever suggest that. But what you're doing is by attempting to thin it, it's a lot harder than you think, even though we can do it quite naturally when we don't want to. You try and do it from the, the swing position and you'll see it's very problematic. So what we're looking to do, quite simply, now again, there's an explanation on how moving the ball in your stance, uh, practicing this drill is going to obviously get you in a position where, first of all, you have faith in this ridiculous uh, explanation. But what you've got to try and do is just concentrate on hitting down. My own visualization is that I'm trying to hit the equator of the golf ball and it has some quite astonishing results. Now we've seen me do it off camera. I'm gonna do a foolish thing because no one ever seems to show their results in these tuition videos. They all sort of film front on. They never show what's going on down the line and the end results. But uh, as an average golfer, I'll do the opposite. So. I'm in my position, I'm focusing just simply on the equator of the golf ball. Now I would say that, and I'll really want to see my sort of uh, low point because I don't think it was perfect. However, we've put another ball in a very similar position where everyone has landed. So even then, the low point was still after the ball. The low point really being, and just a quick explanation, that it's super important, is uh, in the swing arc, there is a point where that becomes the lowest point uh, at the impact location and the furthest part of which the, uh, the iron is away from your body and where you strike the ball in that impact location. You ideally want that impact location to be after the ball. So the lowest point would be slightly after the ball when you've got an iron in hand. So we've got some good numbers. Once again, hit 140 on the button in terms of the carry distance. The low point was after the ball. And if I'm honest with you, it wasn't the best of strikes. But what I certainly didn't do was, as you might think, I didn't thin the ball. And that's the bit that will confuse you, or at least it confused me a hell of a lot, because that's what I'm expecting to do. And that's what I certainly don't do. And what you find is you get a really crisp strike on the golf ball. But once again, I've just pulled that down the left, but a super crisp strike. That was my, again, my own swing, over the top swing. I just want to concentrate on the numbers, that 142 carry, 1.8 after in terms, of the, uh, in terms of the low point. So again, hitting the right kind of numbers, even though I pulled it, a real good crisp iron strike. So what I certainly feel like is I'm hitting the ball in the center of the club face, I'm getting, therefore, I'm benefiting from the ball speeds that you would expect from hitting the center of the club face. We're getting the low point right, we're getting the carry distance consistent, and it's all from me attempting to thin the ball. So I'm gonna bring this up one more time. I'm concentrating, a quarter of the ball is what I'm looking at. I'm trying to hit that ball with the leading edge of my iron, but believe me, you won't do it, and you should end up with a much crisper ball strike. And as you can see from the numbers where we've got this thing right, it's very, very effective indeed. I just love that. I just hate the fact that I've pulled it. But it's such a good strike, so crisp. I've probably added about 10 yards onto that shot. And uh, let's see those final set of numbers. Yeah, 148 carry, 1.9 after in terms of that low point launching consistently in around 20 degrees as well. It's a super, super drill. It clearly needs some effort and work on my part, but certainly something that has positive results. And I would like to take it out on the golf course and obviously see what happens in terms of, do we start to create divots or not? Right, as ever, my interpretation, it won't have been perfect. It won't have been a perfect explanation. It's uh, something that I will leave the link in the video description to the original video on the Art of Simple Golf. Go and follow them, go and look at their tuition videos. They're really, really good. And uh, this one for me, very odd, but very effective. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna carry on practicing that drill because I absolutely love it. And it's just a simple thing to get your head round. And uh, yeah, clearly it's a bit of work, but I loved it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon.